we're looking at a passage in Isaiah actually one verse Isaiah 32 17 and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever I want to read that again and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever you know <clears throat> there's what is the most important thing in the whole world what is the most important thing in the whole world um, well the most important thing in the whole world is to know that we are a child of God to know that we are a child of God and you know having assurance of that uh, Isaiah says um, gives us a, a tremendous amount of, of peace the righteousness can only be found in Jesus Christ he is our righteousness uh, he is our peace he has broken down the middle wall partition and we can come boldly into the throne of grace where we can find um, grace to help in time of need and Isaiah said comfort ye in the 40th chapter comfort ye comfort ye my people saith your Lord your God speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. O Zion that bringest good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up the voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arms shall rule for him, and behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him he shall feed his flock like a shepherd he shall gather the lambs with his arm and gather them to his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young you know uh, there's nothing more important in the whole world than to know that Jesus is our shepherd <clears throat> there's nothing more important in the world to know that he did a work for us that uh, it is paid in full that he has power over all flesh and that he's given eternal life to all of those that believe upon him and there's nothing more important in the whole world to know that um, he's the one that uh, manifested his name unto the men which he gave which God gave him out of the world John 17 6 you know there's a great uh, comfort to know that Jesus Christ has prayed for us and it's a great comfort to know that when he says my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and no man can pluck them out of my hand uh, there's nothing more important in the whole world not providing for our family uh, not being in good health not being in good physical shape not uh, having a, a nice home or nice cars to drive or you know uh, there was a warning to those that said you know you can gain the whole world but lose your soul but one of the great things for God's people is to have the assurance to know with full assurance that we are God's child Paul said brother knowing your election of God knowing uh, your election of God and so what can we do to build up our faith? What can we do to uh, uh, have the comfort of God's words? How can we be assured that we are one of God's elect? You know, Scripture says, Make your calling and election sure. 
how can we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are truly one of God's elect? Uh, well, there's there's many different ways that we can do this. But one of the best ways to build up our faith is through the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In Second Thessalonians, the 13th verse of the second chapter, Second Thessalonians 2.13, it says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God, for you brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation <coughs> through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. That's a beautiful verse. Um, you know, one of the things that gives uh, us comfort that is beyond all comfort is knowing that God has from the beginning chosen us to salvation. You know, there's nothing more uh, to, to, to give uh, God's people to steal their assurance than the deny election. There's nothing more to steal God the assurance of God's people than to deny election, deny predestination, deny that He has chose us before the world began. But there's great comfort in knowing that He has chosen us before the foundation of the world. And that there's great comfort in knowing that um, he predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. It's, it's, there's nothing more important in the world to know that we have been chosen by Jesus Christ himself. There's nothing more important than that. And so... The Armenian churches will try to steal a person's joy and to put doubts in their minds and to put fear in their hearts and to, by denying election and by saying that you can lose your salvation, there's a difference between, you know, the, the, the easy decisionism out there and people who are deceived and who are walking in blatant sin who say that they were once saved, always saved, okay, than those who are actually um, trying to the best of uh, their ability, and we know we can do not do anything apart from God's grace, to live according to the law and the precepts of God. Now, another thing that we know is, that can give us great comfort and assurance is Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. For his elect, for his sheep, the, his commandments are not grievous. So if we find ourselves... Uh, wanting to obey God's commandments, wanting to do His will, then that also gives us great assurance that we're one of His. And it's also wonderful to know that we cannot do anything in and of ourselves. That our reliance and our trust and our faith is wholly placed in Jesus Christ who did all these things for us. There's nothing more important in the whole world to know that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was raised again for our justification. Um, there's nothing more important to know that we are one of God's sheep. And there are a lot of people out there that believe that they're God's sheep who are living in blatant obedience to the word of God. You know, we must be in the word of God. We must be seeking out his 
uh, precepts. You must be uh, uh, looking at the Word of God daily. And uh, David says in the 16th Psalm, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Um... The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. How can we place anything in, in the world, how can we place importance on anything in the world over and above knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're one of God's little sheep. That He's the one that that, uh, did this great thing for us. And our faith is increased by looking at the Word of God and realizing that uh, He is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we'll fear no evil, for he's with us. And surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life, and we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, we can't put too much emphasis on the assurance of our salvation. And we can't put too much emphasis on election and predestination. You know, in the 33rd Psalm, it's the 12th verse, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. It's good to know that we're a heritage of the Lord. It's good to know that uh, God has placed in our heart the desire to commune and and to uh, fellowship with him. And it's good to know that he's given us his word that we can go to daily and find uh, our assurance in him. You know, it's good to dwell upon these things. God is our refuge and a present a strength and a very present help in trouble. You know, we not, and we find also that when we praise God for what he's done for us, that that also uh, increases our assurance. Why do you think that David spent most of his life praising and honoring Jesus Christ? Um, and he says in the 63rd Psalm, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee, and a dry and thirsty land wherein no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. <clears throat> There's great um, joy for God's sheep when we praise and honor Jesus Christ, when we give him glory, that he is our God. He's the God of our salvation. And unto the God, the Lord, belong the issues from regret, from death. Uh, having the assurance of our faith is is very important. And um, we need to search our hearts daily and uh, uh, stay in God's Word and comfort our hearts. And to, uh, if we know that we are walking in disobedience to God, to uh, quickly return to the bishop of our souls and to confess our sins before him 
He's long suffering. He's merciful. He's just. Uh, to give, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And with that comes peace and joy. In the and um, but the the most important thing in the whole world is to know that Jesus Christ is our Savior. That He has paid the price for us. And um, in the uh, 118th Psalm, David says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. Uh, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in His eyes. Okay. Uh, when we find ourselves <clears throat> down to uh, hearted or uh, discouraged, <clears throat> maybe we're doubting our whether we are truly one of God's elect. And uh, any one of God's elect has had those days where maybe we've allowed Satan to come in and discourage us and to uh, put doubts in our minds. Okay we can find that if we return to the Word of God and uh, to go into His Word, we'll find that there's comfort for our hearts. There's comfort for our souls. There's nothing more comforting in the whole world than to know that we are a child of God. There's nothing more comforting. Um, that's why when you when when an elect child of God hears someone that denies election, denies predestination, denies the mighty work of God in salvation, uh, and places it uh, in in the the hands of man and their free will, that it's very very discomforting. It's uh, for God's child, for God's sheep. It's very. It goes against the grain. It goes. It goes against the spiritual grain of the shep of the sheep. Because it gives uh, the sheep uh, the wrong message that salvation is in their hands. It's not in the Almighty. God then that's in their hands. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life, and I am the bread of life. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. You know, and, and there's nothing more comforting for God's little sheep than in the sixth chapter of John. You know, in the 29th verse it says, Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. There's great comfort for the believer. There's great comfort for the believer. There's great comfort for the sheep. Knowing that we've been given to Jesus Christ by the Father. And if we go to Jesus Christ, he will not cast us out. He will not cast us out. Have you gone to Jesus Christ today? Have you found that when you've gone to Jesus Christ um, that you have had tremendous peace and comfort knowing that you're one of His little sheep? Uh, he's, he, that, he says in the uh, seventh chapter of John, the 38th verse, He that believeth on me, as the Scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, there's nothing more comforting to know that, that <clears throat> when we die, we will be in the presence of Jesus Christ our Savior. And that He will, He will uh, beckon us to, to come into His abode. He says, If I go away, I will prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I come again, I will receive you unto myself. 
Well, so when people try to place doubts in your mind, especially as it relates to God's work in salvation, especially as it relates to election, especially as it relates to God's purposes for the foundation of the world, then we need to stand against it. He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so now know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. As Jesus laid down his life for you, are you one of his little sheep? There's nothing more important in the whole world to know that you're one of his little sheep. He said to a number of those people there, the reason you do not believe is because you're not my sheep. He says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Do you hear the voice of Jesus Christ? Do you know, does he... Does he give you confirmation in your heart and in your mind that you are you are one of his little sheep? Um, well, there's again there's many many comforts in the Bible that he can give us to confirm. Uh, the reason he went away, he said, I go away so that, I, that you will receive the Comforter. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit is the one who bears witness with us that we are one of God's little children. And it, it never ceases to amaze me that uh, those who say they're Christians, those who say and use that very scripture to say, you know, his... Spirit, spirit bears witnesses with our spirit that we're the children of God. And they wanted to deny His works. They want to deny that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. They want to deny that He, from the beginning, chose us in Him. Well, He says in the 17th chapter, John, Thou hast given Him power over all flesh, that He should give eternal life to as many as Thou hast given Him. We were given to Jesus Christ before the world began. And this is life eternal, that they might not know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And um, have we believed those words? Have we believed those words? Do we believe that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords in salvation. He says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that I may that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Um, <clears throat> the assurance of our salvation, making our calling and election sure. The best way to make our calling and election sure is to get into the Word of God and see the, the hundreds if not thousands of promises that He's given us um, and to rest in His promises, standing on the promises of God my King. Through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Another great way to increase the little uh, sheep's uh, assurance of their faith. He says in the 8th chapter of Romans, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Um, But also, he gives us in that same uh, chapter, uh, the assurance that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called, and whom He called, them He also justified, and whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things of God before us who can be against us? 
he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? You know, a lot of these Arminian uh, preachers are into condemning election, condemning God's elect, condemning those who stand for predestination, condemning those who give all the glory. But who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, and all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, that's a tremendous, tremendous assurance for God's sheep. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And, you know, if you were truly saved once, you are eternally saved. I don't care what people say about people losing their salvation. The Bible says, I give unto them eternal life, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. And if you were truly born again child of God, if you truly um, have come to Jesus Christ and confessed your sins to Him and uh, fled to the cross of Christ and uh, found yourself uh, utterly destitute of any life and the Holy Spirit came into your heart and quickened your uh, heart and gave you new life to trust in the Son of the living God and His shed blood for your sin, then you, my friend, have eternal life and nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And when people try to put doubts in your mind and say, uh, no, you're, you're really not. Uh, now, if you're living in open rebellion to God's Word, then there's evidence that you never uh, were saved in the first place. Make your calling and election sure. And how do you do that? Well, it's a great thing to know that Jesus Christ is the one that works in our hearts. Uh, repentance, faith, and He gives us all of these things. And it's not dependent upon man. Not dependent upon man. Uh, and uh, He says that uh, we have, we need to continue in His Word. Um, God's the one that gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's the one that does all the work. And um, those who want to deny that, um, they have no assurance of faith. They have no assurance of faith. They don't believe in predestination. They don't believe in election. They don't believe in um, the fact that God did all of these things before the world began that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world uh, and um, so what is there that we can do continually to, we need to be in God's word we need to believe the word of God believe the word of God when he talks about the fact that um, nevertheless the foundation of God stand is sure having this seal of the Lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity um, we must uh, realize that Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross uh, paid for our sins and that uh, 
we have a rest. We have a rest. Fourth chapter of Hebrews it says that um, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Are you trying to please God by your works? Are you are you depending upon your works for salvation? Uh, praying the rosary, praying to Mary, worshiping graven images, um, continually uh, uh, going to altars in front of men, trying to get the acceptance of men. Um, Jesus Christ is the high priest. We don't need any priest. We have a priest. We have a mediator. We can go directly to Jesus Christ. And he says that when we come to him, he will not cast us out. We don't have to go to some church to have people's acceptance or to some preacher or some minister or some father to call no father on earth, call no man father on earth, the scripture says. We have a high priest that has already paid the price for all of our sins, for our present, our past, and our future sins. So we can go to our high priest. And uh, that's great because we, um, in, in the 22nd verse of the 10th chapter of Hebrews, it says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance, assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast in the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised it. He's faithful that promised it. Um, so the most important thing in the whole world <coughs> is to uh, trust in Jesus Christ and, and realizing that our belief and our trusting in Him comes from Him giving us this eternal life and that uh, He's paid the price for our sins through redemption, through justification and through the fact that He predestinated us before the foundation of the world and uh, Brethren, know your election of God. And if you're teaching the opposite, brethren, deny your election of God. Brethren, deny predestination. Then you really need to examine whether you're one of God's elect because Scripture says make your calling and election sure. And the way we make our calling and election sure is to embrace election and to be joyful in the fact that we are one of God's sheep and nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So today we need to be uh, in the Word of God and we need to be comforted by knowing that Jesus Christ is reigning and the 93rd Psalm, we're going to close with that. It says, The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, thou art from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice, the floods lift up their voice. The Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters yea, than the mighty waves of the seas. The high testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forever. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that uh, you have chosen us in him. We're thankful that we are your sheep and that your sheep hear your voice. We thank you for paying sacrifice for our sins. We thank you for giving us assurance that we are one of your little sheep. We're thankful that 
you know, and we know that there's nothing more important in the whole world than to know that we are your children and that we have your word to give us comfort in these um, troubled times that we're living in. We ask that you would increase our faith and you would uh, continue to give rest to the people of God, which we know you will. We know nothing can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you for these things. We help, help us to stand fast in these things. In Christ's name we pray, and for your glory alone. Amen.